In healthcare domain, we can use data science and AI for various use cases. So, for example, using data science and image processing, we can predict whether someone has cancer or not based on the image data. Then we can also use data science for faster and better drug discovery using historical data. Then if we have information about health parameters of a person, then we can use those informations and data points for predicting whether someone has diabetes or not, or someone would suffer with diabetes or not in future. So all those kind of problem statements and questions related to healthcare domain can be solved using data and data science. Hi, my name is Rohit and in today's video, we are going to build a predictive model which would predict whether someone would suffer with diabetes or not. Let's get started. So at the top, we are importing all the libraries that we need. So we are importing the NumPy and PyTorch library. Then from scikit-learn, we are importing train test split function. So in this problem, we are going to build random forest classifier. So I'm importing that. Then all the matrix that we need for evaluating our model, we are importing those matrix as well. Then for hyperparameter tuning, we are going to use cross validation and grid search. So we are importing that function. And then we are importing the functions or modules that we need for visualization. So this is the problem statement for predicting whether someone would suffer with diabetes or not. So predicting the chances of getting diabetes in future. So in the first step, we are reading the data. So the data is present in the form of CSV. So we are reading it using the read CSV function in pandas. And then I'm just displaying the top 10 rows over here. So if you see here, we have first column, which is the ID of the patient. Then we have a number of pregnancies. Then we have information about the glucose level, blood pressure, skin thickness. Then we also have information about insulin and BMI. Then we have information about diabetes pedigree function. So this function basically gives chances of getting diabetes based on your family medical history. Then we have an age of a person and at the end we have an outcome column which is 1 or 0. So 1 represents the person is diabetic or there is a chance of getting diabetes and 0 represents it's a normal health parameters. So this is the data we have. Now let's go ahead and explore the data. So to check which all columns you have and the missing values, you can use the info function. So I'm doing df.info. And if you can see here, we have 2768 rows in our data set. And all the columns or all the data points that we have are not having any missing values. So everything is present in this data. So we don't have missing values problem in this particular data. Then using describe function, you can get important statistical parameters related to each column. So we are applying the describe function on our pandas data frame. So for example, if you check column pregnancies, the minimum value of pregnancies we are having is zero. And if you check the mean value, the average value of pregnancies we have is 3.74. Then we also have a glucose level. So for glucose level, the average glucose level is 121. And the minimum glucose is from zero and it is going all the way up to 199. Then similarly for blood pressure, we have values which are going up to 122. So for every column, we are having various kind of values and their ranges can be known using, using the describe function. Then if you have to check number of missing values in any column, you can use is null function and then on that you can apply some function so that would give you number of missing values in any column so in column id we have zero missing values so basically all the columns have zero missing values so we don't have any missing values issue in this problem then the outcome column for on which we want to build our classification model this is the column we want to predict so if you apply the value counts function you would see that we have almost 1800 people which are not having chances of diabetes and 950 odd people with diabetes. Now I'm just creating visualization related to box plot. So in this visualization, it would be clear that what is the range of feature values related to people who would have diabetes in future and people who won't have diabetes. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a figure with size 2012. 
and then i am creating sub plots with 3 by 3 matrix so in total in this we can create nine plots three plots in each row and then i am plotting box plots using cbon for every feature value that we have so we are creating a box plots over here so this is how those plots would look like so for example number of pregnancies is on the y axis over here and the outcome on x axis so class 1 represents people having diabetes so if you see here for people with diabetes the number of pregnancies are on higher side as compared to people not having diabetes then glucose level is also on a higher side for people suffering with diabetes and it's on a lower side for people not suffering with diabetes so like this you can go through every feature and try to understand every feature before you go ahead and build your machine learning model so usually when you work in the industry after you create these visualization plots you can discuss with your stakeholders that this is the visualization i am getting now what kind of conclusion i can draw from that so this would help you in getting better understanding of the data better understanding of the domain before you go ahead and build your machine learning model so if you check age so age is on a higher side for people having diabetes and it's on a lower side if you compare these two boxes for people not having diabetes so this analysis exploratory data analysis is useful for understanding the data to getting better understanding of every feature and how it might have impact on your outcome before you go ahead and build your machine learning model okay so basically what we are going to do now is we are going to create a train test split so that we can go ahead and train our machine learning model so here i am calling train test split and features function which i have written over here and to that function we are passing our data frame so basically if you check here right what we are doing is y variable we are defining as the outcome column so this is the column we are going to predict and in x we are going to define all our features so obviously we have to drop outcome column and we have to drop id column because id is just giving us patient id so it won't be useful in creating our predictive model so we are dropping those two columns and the remaining columns we are keeping in variable x which is basically variable which has all the features then from scikit learn we are importing train test split and by using train test split we are going to divide our data into 80 20 split so 80% data we would keep for training and 20% data we would keep for testing purposes and over here we are just printing the rows of fee feature matrix that we have and we are also printing the list of columns that we have and all the features we are storing in variable features so if you see here this is the data we have and these are our features pregnancies glucose blood pressure skin thickness insulin bmi diabetes pedigree function and age so using these features we are going to build a predictive model which would predict whether someone would suffer with diabetes or not so we have now created separate data set for training and testing so training data set we would use for training the model and testing data set we would use for evaluating the model so over here i have written fit and evaluate model function so in this function if you see here i am going to use random forest classifier you can try to use different kind of models as well and usually what i have seen is some people also try to build logistic regression model on such kind of data sets that is also fine but generally speaking logistic regression model can capture the linear pattern between input and output so if you want to capture non linear patterns it is recommended to go ahead with non linear models right random forest edge boost so here i am just defining our random forest classifier with the default parameters which we have defined over here so max depth we are keeping 5 so this is the depth of decision trees which would be built in random forest then mean sample split i am keeping 0.01 it means that when any tree is split at that point of time there should be at least 1% data points for creating that split otherwise no further splitting would be done then max features we are keeping as 0.8 it means that at any point of a node where the decision tree would be split it should use maximum 80% features for creating that split and then max samples we are keeping 0.8 so here it means that it should be using maximum 80% samples for creating the split so this max features and max samples is related to bagging concept within random forest so this you can say is a feature bagging and this you can say is a data bagging so basically in this function then we are going to fit the model 
using our training data set so that can be done using random forest dot fit so we are initializing random forest classifier over here then after that we are going to predict the label so that can be done using predict function so you have to give the name of variable in which you are storing the model and then apply predict function then after that we are going to create a confusion matrix basically so the confusion matrix is used for evaluating the model the accuracy score so all the evaluation parameters we are getting over here so here i am just calling the fit and evaluate model function and passing it our training data set and testing data set so it would go here and execute the code train the machine learning model using random forest classifier and give output related to various evaluation matrix which we have keep so this is how our confusion matrix is looking like so the way to read this confusion matrix is the values that you have at the diagonal are the accurate predictions so the first row is for class 0 so for class 0 we are able to predict 326 samples correctly 48 samples we are predicting as class 1 and for class 1 we are able to predict 144 samples correctly but 36 samples though they are belonging to class 1 we are predicting them as class 0 so the accuracy of this model is 84.83% and this is how our precision record is looking like so for class 0 our f1 score is 0.89 and for class 1 our f1 score is 0.77 so this model is giving us decent results and overall it is 84.83% accurate and the f1 score is also good for both the classes so we are getting decent results with this model now what we can do is we can try to improve the results of this model so that can be done using hyperparameter tuning so what we are doing over here is we are defining the parameter grid so basically we are going to try these different parameters on our model and see if that helps in improving the results of our model so we are defining max depth at 3 5 7 10 so all these parameters model is going to try then again for mean sample split we are defining the range of parameters which we want to try so in this parameter grid we have defined different kind of parameters which we want to try on our model and see if any of these parameter combinations gives us better results so then what we are doing is we are creating a random forest classifier okay with default parameters and then we are passing it to grid search cv this is the function that we are importing from scikit learn to that you have to pass your estimator that is the model that you want to build so in this case we want to build random forest classifier so we are passing it over here then you have to pass your parameter grid the grid that you want to try on for the grid search cv then we are passing cv equal to 5 so we are going to use five fold cross validation so every data set that we are going to pass so this training data set is going to get divided into five sets and every time four sets would be used for training and one set would be used for evaluating the model or testing the model this is what happens in cross validation and for every iteration different sets of parameters would be tried so that we try to find the best possible combination so when you run this you would see the results so basically you would see different sets of parameters that are getting tried and what kind of results you are getting with respect to the scoring so what we are doing now is all the results would be stored into the cv results parameter so we are just saving those results into data frame now into a data frame results and then we are sorting the values so we are sorting the mean test score in descending order so basically so that we get the best parameters at the top so if you see here let me scroll to the right so the mean test score we are getting 0.9250 as the best mean test score on our cross validation data set okay and what are the corresponding parameters let's check that as well so we are getting it for maximum depth 10 maximum features 0.8 maximum samples 1 and mean sample split 0.01 for this combination of features basically we are getting the best results or this combination of hyper parameters we are getting the best results so instead of checking it manually what you can do is you can also get the best results using best params parameter within your grid search cv so what you can do is search dot best params and that would give you best parameters on this particular data set for the particular model that you are training so these are the best parameters we are getting now what we can do is we can retrain the model on whole training data set that we have and this time we can use these best parameters so bas basically what i am doing is i am again calling the fit and evaluate model function which we have defined over here 
this function but this time we are passing the parameters based on the best parameters which we have found so what you can do is you can pass the best parameters that you have found to this particular function so if you see here the results that we are getting accuracy of the random forest in this case we are getting 94.40% so we are able to get much more accurate model using the hyperparameter tuning that we have done and you can also check the feature importances of individual features so you can do that using model dot feature importances so this would store the importance of every feature based on how it is used for splitting the trees across different trees within random forest based on that it calculates how important every feature is so that feature importances we are storing in a data frame and then we are just creating a visualization of it so if you see here the most important feature that we are getting is glucose then bmi then age so from this when you discuss these results with your stakeholders you can discuss that based on these features my model has taken decision that who is going to suffer with diabetes in the future and glucose bmi age are the most important features in predicting whether someone would suffer with diabetes or not so this is how you can solve problems in healthcare domain using data science so i hope this was clear to you how you can build data science and machine learning models for solving problems related to the healthcare domain now what you can do is you can go to kaggle and try to get different data sets related to healthcare domain and build your own machine learning model so that would give you lot of confidence in terms of problem solving using machine learning thanks for watching the video and i would see you in the next one bye bye